हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम अशोक गोयल फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड एस्ट्रो फिजिक्स यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल एंटाइटल ग्रुप थ्योरी एग्जिम्स एंड प्रॉपर्टीज अंडर द पेपर मैथमेटिकल फिजिक्स ग्रुप थ्योरी वर्ल्ड इन द एटीन एंड नाइनटीन सेंचुरी in the works of classical algebra by lagrange and in the in number theory by gauss in analysis by mathematicians lee poincare and klein and in the study of permutations in connection with the solution of algebraic equation which led directly to the concept of permutation group by raffini abel and galva in this module the students are going to learn the basic group axioms and group properties number 1 number 2 they will learn to identify whether a given set forms a group or not and finally to learn to construct group multiplication table why should we learn group theory well group theory is a branch of mathematics that forms a natural language in the description of symmetries results from underlying symmetries in classical and quantum physics are elegantly expressed in the language of representation of groups which were studied extensively by mathematicians in the study of crystal structure the group theory was used much before it was used in physics in fact the regularity in the arrangement of molecules and their symmetries allowed group theory to lead to the classification of crystal structure in nature in quantum theory the group theory was introduced by wigner and hermann weyl to study the symmetries arising out of a special theory of relativity which led directly to the classification of quantum states of particles based on their spin the for example a particle is spin 0 1 2 how are they classified based on their mass and angular momentum was included in this in the study of symmetries modern description of fundamental interactions in nature are based in the internal symmetries of these interaction for example the modern theory in particle physics the so called standard model is based on the, the inter internal gauge symmetries of strong weak and electromagnetic interactions group theory is an important mathematical tool in many branches of physics before we start with the study of groups i want to start with defining a set a set is a collection of identifiable things or elements these elements can be anything objects numbers matrices etc from the definition of a set it should be clear whether the given thing belongs to the set or not thus if we define a set a to be a set of all positive integers less than 100 it is clear for example that the number 7 belongs to the set a but number 105 does not belong to a and likewise the rational number 3 divided by 5 does not belong to e to the set the definition of the set is thus very precise a counter example which is not a set according to our definition is for example a set which consists of only 3 integers less than 100 these three integers could be 1 2 3 11 12 13 but which one is not specified thus if someone asks you if the integer 19 is a part of this set or not is not clear it cannot be certain whether it belongs to the set or not thus the, this is not a set we start with the definition of a group and we introduce certain axioms a group is a set expressed as g within brackets a b etc is a group if a binary operation a binary operation in a group is called multiplication but it need not be multiplication in the arithmetic sense 
it can be addition, it can be a multiplication of matrices or whatever. And this binary operation is defined for every ordered pair A and B which belong to the group G. They should satisfy the following properties. Number one, closer. If A and B are the elements belonging to the set, then A dot B, which is the A multiplied by B in the sense of uh, multiplication, which is a binary operation defined in the group, then AB also belongs to G for all elements A and B belonging to the group. This is the property of closure. We next have the property of associativity, which says that for every element A, B, C belonging to the group G, A dot within brackets B dot C is equal to A dot B within brackets dot C, which means that whether we first multiply B element B with C and then with A, or we first multiply the elements A and B and then with C, we get the same result. It's the associativity like, for example, you know, if you have real numbers and you have three numbers, five, six, seven, whether you multiply five and six first and then seven, or you multiply seven and six first and then five, you get the same result. It is the property of associativity. The third property is very important for the defining a group is the property of identity which says that there exists an element which is called E, the identity, in the group G such that any element of A multiplied by E from the right hand side is equal to A itself for all A belonging to G. For example, if you have a set of real numbers, then the identity element is say for example 1. When you multiply any number which belongs to the set, by this identity which is 1, you get the number back belongs obviously to the set. The next property is the property of inverse, which says that, that for a, every element of A belonging to the group G, there exists an element B which also belongs to the group G such that A dot B is equal to the identity element. That is B is equal to A inverse. This is how we define the inverse. So if all these four properties are satisfied or axioms are satisfied by the elements of a set, then the set forms a group. There are certain corollaries which follow from the definitions of a group. That is from the axioms. Some of these are the following. The property of closure between two elements A and B equally apply when B is equal to A. Thus for any A belonging to G, A dot A is equal to A square which also belong to G and A cube, A4 etc all belong to G. The identity element defined in the axioms is the right identity as it multiplies an element A of the group G on the right. If one defines this, similarly a left identity E prime which also belongs to the group G, we satisfy that E prime multiplying an element A from the left is also A for all A belonging to G, then it is very easy to prove that E prime is equal to E, which means that the left identity is equal to the right identity. Likewise, it is very easy to see that, that the left inverse is equal to the right inverse if A inverse multiplies with A on the left, then this is also equal to A inverse multiplying the element A on the right and A inverse A is equal to A inverse is equal to the identity element E. Thus we have a unique identity which is a left identity which is equal to the right identity and we have a inverse which is also unique and an element can be multiplied by its inverse either on the left or the right giving us the identity element. In general, the group multiplication is not commutative, which means that if we take two elements A and B, then A multiplied B is not necessarily equal to B multiplied by A 
for all elements a and b belonging to g when a b is equal to b a for all elements a and b belonging to g the group is called abelian otherwise the group is called non abelian the elements of a group can be a discrete set or a continuous for discrete groups the number of elements can be finite or infinite but always countable for example the number of elements the number of elements in the group is called the order of the group this is another property which follows from the axioms that is the rearrangement lemma the lemma states that for any fixed element g prime belonging to the group g we have the group g consisting of of the elements g prime g where g belongs to g this set of elements g prime g where g prime is particular element belonging to the group g and g is an element any element belonging to of course to the group g this set consists of all elements of g but in a different order so this is called the rearrangement lemma having discussed the axioms of the group and the properties that the elements of a set should satisfy to form a group let's now give some examples number 1 set of all integers positive and negative with addition as group multiplication forms a group because the identity element in this set is 0 and the inverse of a number n is minus n but set of all real numbers positive as well as negative with the exclusion of 0 under multiplication forms a set but remember that a set of all integers positive or negative do not form a group under multiplication whereas the set of all real numbers positive as well as negative with the exclusion of 0 forms a group under multiplication for example the identity element in this set is 1 and the inverse of a number p is 1 by p third a set of all rotations in two dimensions about the z axis is an example of a continuous group this group is called an so2 group fourth set of all n by n matrices under addition and if the matrices are non singular then the set also forms a group under matrix multiplication set of all n by n unitary matrices under multiplication forms a group and this group is called un the set of matrices which are unimodular that is have determinant 1 also forms a group and this group of unitary matrices with which are unimodular forms a group which is called the group sun whereas the set of all non singular matrices under multiplication also forms a group and the group is called gln if the matrices have determinant 1 the group is called a special linear group in n dimensions and is designated as sln we will now define some specific groups the first group that i want to define is the cyclic group if a is an element of a group g then integral powers of a namely a square a cube a4 an are also in g this follows from the axioms as we have seen if g is a finite group there must exist a finite positive integer n such that a to the power n is equal to e the smallest non zero integer n satisfying a to the power n is equal to e is called the order of the group cyclic groups are clearly abelians because an element a square multiplied by the element a cube is equal to the element a cube multiplied by the element a square an example of a finite discrete cyclic group is a set of four elements which are the roots of unity the elements being 1 i minus i 1 this set forms a group with the group multiplication 
defined as ordinary multiplication. The closure property can be explicitly exhibited by the following group multiplication table. In the case of finite groups, it's very important to construct the group multiplication table. Once we have constructed a group multiplication table, everything we want to know about the, that particular group is contained in the multiplication table. So multiplication table is constructed by writing the elements as 1 i minus i minus 1 as shown in the slide and constructing the multiplication of all these elements with all the possible elements of the group. That is, for example, 1 into 1 is 1, 1 into i is i, 1 into minus i is minus i, 1 into minus i is minus 1. Likewise, if I multiply all the elements of the cyclic group of four elements with minus 1, I get minus 1, minus i, i and 1 as shown in the slide. A notable feature of the multiplication table is that if you look at the rows of the table, then all the four elements occur in the rows, but maybe in different order. But from the rearrangement lemma, they are equivalent. They constitute the same group. Likewise, all the columns contain all the elements of the group, but rearranged. It's clear from the multiplication table that the properties of closure, identity, inverse, and associativity as discussed in the axioms are satisfied. For example, if I take the element i, I can see from the table this inverse is minus i because minus i into i gives me 1. Likewise, the inverse of minus i is i and inverse of 1 is obviously 1. So, what we have discussed is an example of a cyclic group of order 4 whose elements are the fourth roots of unity, namely 1, minus 1, i and minus 1. As a second example, let us consider a set of 2 by 2 matrices given as 1 alpha 0 1 where alpha is any real number. The matrices given by this form a group with the group multiplication as matrix multiplication. To see this, let an element corresponding to a particular value of alpha 1 be defined as g alpha 1 is equal to 1 alpha 1 0 1 for alpha 1 belonging to the group g. Then the element g alpha 2 would be 1 alpha 2 0 1. The product or the multiplication of the two elements g alpha 1 g alpha 2 is given by the matrix multiplication of the matrix 1 alpha 1 0 1 with the matrix 1 alpha 2 0 1 which is equal to 1 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 0 and 1 since 1 plus alpha 2 belong to the same group. So I have g alpha 1 g alpha 2 belonging to the group g and the closure property is satisfied. The associative property can also be seen by considering g alpha 1 multiplied by the product of two elements g alpha 2 g alpha 3 as shown in the slide and one can easily see that the closure property is satisfied. The identity matrix g i is defined and 1 0 0 1 since the identity matrix multiplied by any matrix g alpha can be seen to be equal to g alpha whether it is multiplied from the left or the right. Inverse of the matrix g alpha also exists as can be seen very easily. The inverse of the matrix g alpha which is defined as 1 alpha 0 1 is given by 1 minus alpha 0 1 and the product g minus alpha g alpha can be seen to be equal to identity matrix which is a diagonal matrix 1 0 0 1 hence the inverse exists. The identity matrix g i is defined and 1 0 0 1 since the identity matrix multiplied by any matrix g alpha can be seen to be equal to g alpha whether it is multiplied from the left or the right. Inverse of the matrix g alpha also exists as can be seen very easily. The inverse of the matrix g alpha 
which is defined as 1 alpha 0 1 is given by 1 minus alpha 0 1 and the product g minus alpha g alpha can be seen to be equal to identity matrix which is a diagonal matrix 1 0 0 1 hence the inverse exists. The next group which we want to discuss today is the permutation group or the symmetric group. This is one of the very important groups and in fact we will later see that this is called the father of all groups in the sense that all the groups can be considered as a subgroup of the permutation group but of course we will learn that later. So what is a permutation group? Consider a set of n objects labeled 1, 2, 3, n and n distinct locations labeled a1, a2, a3, an. Locate the objects in these locations so that there is only one object in any location. All locations are there thus occupied. If the objects are now shuffled between the locations such that each of the locations once again has one and only one object. For example, one can shift the object 1 to the location 2, object 2 to the location 3, object 3 to the location 4, so on and so forth. So there are how many permutations? If there are n objects, they are obviously n factorial permutations. The location which had object i1 now will have in general a different object i1 prime after the permutation, which can be denoted by i1 goes to i1 prime and similarly i2 goes to i2 prime and with the set i1 prime, i2 prime, i n prime being the same set as i1, i2, i n but in a different order. This transformation from i1 to 1 prime in general i n to n, i n prime can be written as a transformation pi 1 where the objects i1, i2, i n are shuffled such that i1 goes to i1 prime, i2 goes to i2 prime, i n goes to i n prime. The order in which the objects in the set is written is clearly irrelevant. Why? Because of the rearrangement theorem. Therefore, we can as well write the transformation pi 1 which we defined earlier as i3 goes to i3 prime first, then i1 goes to i1 prime, i4 prime goes to i4 prime, etc. in a different order. Similarly, if we have another permutation pi 2, where pi 2 is defined as i1 i3 prime going to i3 double prime, i1 prime going to i1 double prime, i4 prime going to i4 double prime, so on and so forth. And obviously, as I said before, there are n factorial such permutations. So, pi is equal to 1, 2, etc. We define the multiplication of these permutations in the following way. Multiplying the two permutations pi 2 and pi 1, where pi 2 is defined as i3 prime, i1 prime, is prime, and wherein i3 prime goes to i3 double prime, is prime goes to is double prime, with the permutation uh, pi 1, where i3 goes to i3 prime, i4 goes to i4 prime and so on. This multiplication of permutations is obviously given by wherein the i3 is permuted to i3 prime because i3 is permuted to i3 prime by pi 1 and i3 prime is then permuted to i3 double prime by pi 2. Therefore, when the two permutations are taken together, then i3 is permuted to i3 double prime. Therefore, pi 2 pi 1 is given by i3 goes to i3 prime, i1 goes to i1 prime and i n goes to i n double prime which is obviously one of the pi's because they are just rearranged. As a special case, we have a permutation which is the identity permutation in which the object is permuted to itself. That is the identity element or the permutation is defined as i1 goes to i1, i2 goes to i2 and i n goes to i n without any change. To illustrate the permutation symmetry or a group of permutations, let us consider a group S3 which by our definition is three factorial elements, the six elements. The group can be easily enumerated by defining the permutations from pi 1 to pi 6 in the following way. Pi 1 is the identity transformation when Object 1 is permuted 
to the location 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, pi 2 defined as A, denoted as A rather, in which the object 1 is permitted to the location 2, 2 to 1 and 3 to 3, pi 3 denoted by B is where the object 1 remains unchanged, 2 is permitted to 3 and 3 to 2 and likewise the permutation pi 4 designated by C where 1 is permuted to 3, 2 to 2, 3 to 1 and pi phi designated by D where object 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to second location and pi 6 where designated as F where object 1 goes to location 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 1 and these are the only possible permutations, only possible elements. One can easily work out the multiplication table for these elements. Our elements are from pi 1 to pi 6 designated here as E, A, B, C, D and F as shown in the slide. To work out the multiplication rule for this group, for example, D and C, the element D is defined as 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 2 and C as 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 2 and 3 goes to 1. So when these are multiplied together, this obviously can be written as a product of two permutations where 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 3 with the permutation where 3 goes to 1, 1 goes to 3 and 2 goes to 2 by the rearrangement of element C, which is obviously equal to 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 2 because that C permutes 3 to 1 and then D permutes 1 to 3. So we can see from here that 1 is permuted to 1. Likewise, 2 is permuted to 3 and 3 is to 2, which is nothing but the element B from the graph. So multiplication table can then be easily constructed. From what we have defined earlier and defined in multiplication, now it is straightforward to construct the multiplication table. We have six elements E, A, B, C, D and F and we can easily construct the table. We can see that when B is multiplied with A, you get the permutation F or element F and like when D is multiplied by D, for example, you get F and when F is multiplied by F, you get D. So this multiplication table, again, you can see that the rows and columns of this table contain all the elements though in different order and no element is repeated. From here it is easy to see that for example the inverse of the element B is B, inverse of the element D is F because FD and DF from the table can be seen to be equal to the identity and likewise the inverse of C is C itself. So C square is E. So multiplication table for permutation group S3 we will see later is a very important for our study of for groups of six elements. So students let us summarize what we have learned in this module. We have seen that group theory is useful in studying the symmetry consequences in classical and quantum physics. Modern description of fundamental interactions in nature are based on the group structure of internal symmetries of these interactions. The modern theory of particle physics, which is known as the standard model, is indeed a study of the symmetry structure of gauge theories. A group is a set of elements that can be multiplied associatively, has an identity element, it has an inverse for every element and the multiplication does not result in an element which is outside the set. That is the property of closure, inverse, associativity and identity are the four important properties of a set to be an element, to be a group. An important group 
is the symmetry group which is an example of a discrete group it is a group of permutations of n things and has n factorial elements and we would study later that this symmetry group is one of the most important groups and it is called the father of all groups in the sense that any other group is a subgroup of the symmetry group thank you